Haven Kids. It's episode 16 of Haven Kids at Home. You guys ready to sing some songs, do some catechism, and learn some cool stories? I know I am. Look at my kids. They drew these things on our chalkboard wall. We've been having a lot of fun at home. I hope you guys have too. You ready for this episode? Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Hey, Haven Kids. <laughs> I'm here in nature. Do you see that tree house back there? That tree house over there? <laughs> I did it. I'm holding it in my hand. So, on this episode, we are going to learn question 34 and question 35 from the Catechism. We're still talking about sin and Adam and Eve breaking the covenant of life. But we need to understand, right? We need to understand. What is true and we need to understand why we needed Jesus to rescue us, right? Yes, right. The answer is yes, ma'am, right? So first, let's remember what sin is. So way back in question 29, we defined sin. And question 29, 30, and 31 defined sin, right? So sin is not being or doing what God requires or doing what God forbids. That's my summary of questions 29 through 31. And the only reason that really matters right now is we're still talking about sin. So I wanted to remind you what we're talking about, right? What are we talking about? So question 34 is, who tempted Adam and Eve to this sin? Remember, remember what this sin is? This sin is eating the forbidden fruit, Blech, right? So who tempted Adam and Eve to this sin? The answer is Satan tempted Eve first, and then he used her to tempt Adam. What? That is so wrong, but that's what happened. So, question 35, how did Adam and Eve change when they sinned? Remember when they were like holy and happy way back? When God made them, they were holy and happy? Well, instead of being holy and happy, they became sinful and miserable. Yeah. So. Question 35, how did Adam and Eve change when they sinned? Instead of being holy and happy, they became sinful and miserable. Nah, I know, it was terrible. So now we're gonna sing it, cause why not, right? And I do have a complaint about this song. Why is this happiest part of the song? It's like super cheerful, we're talking about sin. What is that about? I have a disagreement with the composer there, but other than that, it's helpful, right? It's good stuff. Okay. Oh. Woman well, Eve to the sin. Satan tempted Eve first. And then he used her to tempt Adam. How did Adam and Eve change when they sinned? Instead of being holy and happy, they became sinful and miserable. <laughs> like, I sound so happy. I sound just sad. So confusing. Blech. God did Adam and Eve to this sin. Satan tempted to Eve first. And then he used her to tempt Adam. How did Adam and Eve change when they sinned? Tempting, holy, and happy. They became sinful and miserable. Oh, did I tell you? I didn't tell you. Next episode, we're going to review. So, practice, practice and then we can party, party, review, party next time, okay? Awesome, okay. Blech. Who tempted Adam and Eve to the sin? Satan tempted Eve first, and then he used her to tempt Adam. Satan taught him and he pleased for the sin. Instead of being holy and happy, they became sinful and miserable. So, Thank you so much for practicing question 34 and 35 with me learning it and singing it. And um, next time we're going to do a review party. And I hope you're having a great summer. It's so hot. Have you noticed that it's hot outside? <laughs> it's hot. So I hope you have lots of water to play in. Hope you get to hear insects chirping and creaking, creeping, creaking, chirping. You know what I mean, making cool sounds. Hope you're finding some toads in your flower beds. Anybody finding toads in their yards? We apparently have like a toad resort on one side of our house. We discovered 
Very exciting. Let me know if you have a toad. Love to know about it. Alrighty, love you guys. Hello, Haven Kids. Hey. And we're singing a yeah. brand new song, guys. So get ready. It's called Grace Got You by Mercy Me. to reenact a story that I had read recently. Okay? You guys ready for another story? Our story takes place in the book of Daniel. Now, remember from last week, we talked about a guy named Jonah and the big fish? Well, our story in the book of Daniel happens many years later. But at this point, the two kings from Israel and Judah, they continued to disobey God. God used a nation to swallow up the lands of Judah and Israel. Now, this nation was called Babylon. They took their best possessions, they took their best gold, their best animals, they even took people as servants. And one of those people, his name is Daniel. Da -da -da, Daniel. So, before we get started, remember our story of Joseph a few weeks back? Well, Remember that Joseph, he had a gift given to him by God. And this gift, he could interpret dreams. Daniel, he was gifted in the same way. Now, he could interpret visions. So, that's what he did. He interpreted the vision that the king of Babylon had. And because he could do this, he was made the third most important 
person and the kingdom. But that same night, another king, the king of Persia, King Darius. King Darius, he conquered Babylon. So, after conquering Babylon, King Darius, he took all the rulers of Babylon and made them his own rulers. And so, you can imagine, Daniel, he was now one of three of the most powerful people in the empire. The other rulers, such as another guy, he was kind of jealous of Daniel. <clears throat> now you see, Daniel, he wasn't even born a Babylonian. He was a nobody. And now he's speaking directly to the king himself. He didn't deserve that position. So, other rulers, they plotted against him. They plotted to hurt Daniel. Now, what they were thinking, Daniel, he loved God, and then they knew that. And so, these other rulers, they went to King Darius, and they tricked King Darius into making a new law. And this law stated that no one could pray to anyone except King Darius himself for 30 days. If anyone were to break that law, they would be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel, he knew. He knew about this law, but he loved God more. So, one night, Daniel was praying in his house, and the other rulers, they caught him praying. So, they tattletailed. They told King Darius. Now, King Darius, he liked Daniel, but it was the law. There was nothing that King Darius could do, so he had no choice but to throw Daniel into the lion's den. Now, instead of Baby Yoda, thank you, Baby Yoda, there were actual lions in the den. And they were very hungry. And so, they threw Daniel into the lion's den. And he said to Daniel, I hope the God you love protects you. Everybody went to bed. And if you can imagine, Daniel, he was trapped, stuck with a bunch of lions. The next morning, the king woke up and he ran out to check on Daniel. Daniel, he yelled back that he's safe and sound. Daniel told King Darius that God had sent an angel to shut the mouths of the lion so that they couldn't eat him. Not even a single scratch was found on Daniel. And after this, King Darius he declared the good news to all of the empire, saying that everyone should pray and worship this God who rescued. Did you know God promises to rescue us, not just once, but forever. The Bible describes death like a mouth that swallows us and separates us from God. Well, when God sent his son, Jesus, to tell the people the good news of his forgiveness, their wicked hearts made them jealous of Jesus. They put him on a cross, and they killed Jesus. And so after that, they put him in a tomb. Kind of like the lion's den. They put Daniel in the lion's den. Well, they put Jesus in his tomb. And they rolled the stone to cover it, cover the entrance. Except, one thing was a little different. Jesus had conquered death. For you and for me. See, Jesus, he's the greater Daniel. He trusts God. He promises to protect you and me forever. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you for our cast. Bye, guys. Oh, that was such a great time. I'm so glad you guys came today. Don't forget, there's even more resources for you and your families on our website, www.havenkatie.com slash hkhome. We have playlists for the catechism chant. We have some cool songs for some other playlists as well. We have some crafts and activities for you and your family. So hop on there, don't stop connecting, and we'll see you guys next week, all right? And stay tuned for a sneak peek on the update with the caterpillars. It's gonna be really cool.